In today's tutorial, I'll be using Inkscape to show you how to create a circular pattern with arrows going around it, similar to what you see here on my screen. So let's close out of that and get started. The first thing we do in Inkscape, let's go to View. Make sure you have, oh, I'm in the wrong window. Let's go to View, make sure you have Custom selected. Zoom, zoom in at uh, View, zoom, zoom in at one-to-one, -one, so we're zoomed in at 100%. Then we'll open up the Align and Distribute menu with that button right there. Make sure you have Less Selected chosen. And then we'll go to Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke with that button. Open up that menu. And the first thing we'll do is we'll create a circle. So click on the, click on the tool that says Create Circles, Ellipses, and Arcs. And hold Control and Shift on the keyboard and click and drag on the canvas to create a perfectly round circle. And we can go back to our arrow. And let's come over here to where it says Opacity. Let's drop the opacity in half and come up here to where it says effect. And this very first box, let's make sure we have that turned off. When scaling objects, scale the stroke width by the same proportion, we're going to turn that off. All right, so we're going to turn the fill off. Come over to the fill tab, click the X to turn that off. Come over to the stroke paint tab, click the blue button to turn that on. And let's click the stroke style tab and let's give that a 70 point stroke. So hit 70 and hit enter. And then come over here to this little eye, uh, this little lock icon between the two input boxes. Click and turn that on. And come where it says width, we're going to erase whatever number's in there. We're going to type 400. So we end up with something like that. Now let's take this with this selected and let's go to path, stroke to path. And what we'll do next is we'll click on our create uh, rectangles and squares. Hold control and shift on the keyboard. Click and drag to create a perfect square. Let's turn that red and let's come over to the stroke paint tab and turn that off and then we'll go back to our arrow and let's make this 200. So hit 200, hit enter and then hold shift and click on the circle so you have them both selected and let's align them, uh, align the left edges and then align the top edges so it's set up like that. And then we can click off of the graphic to deselect both of them. And then click on just this one right here. Let's turn this into a path. So we'll go to Path, Object to Path. And then we'll right click this and go to Duplicate and hold Shift in the keyboard and click on the circle and we'll align the bottom edges just like that. Then we'll click on this red square up here and hold Shift and click on the circle so we have them both selected and go to Path, Intersection. And we'll take this red square right here. We're going to right click this and go to duplicate. We're going to move this off to the right and then click on it a second time to get the rotation handles and hold control on the keyboard and click and drag this thing until the corners are going perfectly up and down like that. And then we'll go to our edit paths by nodes. Let's click on that and take this bottom node right here with it selected, press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. And we'll come up here to where it says snap to custom nodes. We're going to turn that button on. And we're going to take these handles and snap it onto those nodes so that it creates a triangle just like that. Now let's go back to our arrow. Let's turn the snap to cusp nodes off. We don't need that anymore. And then we can click on this a second time to get the rotation handles and hold control on the keyboard and let's scale this thing around so that it's upright. Kind of like that. Now let's take this ring right here. Let's right click that and go to duplicate. And let's grab our magnifying glass and zoom in on this, this top part right here. Once we're zoomed in, we're going to grab our rectangle tool again. And let's create a rectangle, just a little sliver of a rectangle going over this part of the shape. And then we'll go back to our arrow and hold shift in the keyboard and click on this. Go to path, intersection. So we end up with a little sliver just like that. We're just going to use that for a reference point. Now let's press 1 on the keyboard to zoom out. And let's click on this red triangle and hold shift and click on that little sliver right there. We're just going to use that as a reference point to align this part of the arrow on the horizontal axis. So we go like that and then we'll come over here to where it says align left edges of objects to the right edge of the anchor. We're going to click on that and it's going to attach it to the very edge of that right there. So then we can click off of everything to deselect it. And let's click on just this red triangle and hold control on the keyboard and click and drag this in. Let's scale this thing down until it's about 
about that big. We don't want that thing too big. Maybe about that size. We can click on this little sliver and press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. We don't need that anymore. Now let's click this triangle and hold shift and click on this black part of what's left of the ring. And let's go to path union. Now let's come back up here and let's turn our snap to cusp nodes back on. And let's click on this a second time to get our rotation handles. And in the center of the graphic, there should be this tiny little crosshair, just like that. What we're going to do is we're going to take that crosshair and we're going to snap it onto the corner of this rectangle, of that square. So snap it on there. And then we can hold control on the keyboard and click and drag this thing around so that it moves in a circular motion. So we'll start right here and then we'll press the space bar to make a copy. And while still holding control, we'll click and drag this thing down here. Press the space bar to make another copy. Click and drag it up here. Space bar to make another copy. And then right back up here. And then we can let go of everything. Then we can turn this snap to cusp nodes off. We can click on this red square and press delete on the keyboard. We don't need that anymore. And what we'll do is we'll take this, this top left portion and we'll right click this and go to duplicate and hold shift in the keyboard and click on this 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 segment next to it next to it and go to path difference then we'll right click this one go to duplicate hold shift in the keyboard and click on the segment beneath it and go to path difference then we'll right click that duplicate hold shift click on the one next to it path difference and then we'll right click this and go to duplicate hold shift click on that one and go to path difference. So that's all set. Now what we can do now is we can click and drag over all four of these and let's bring the opacity on them all the way up. And then we can click off of them to deselect everything. Now it's hard to tell from everything being the same color, but we now have four separate segments of a circular arrow. So what we're going to do is give these all individual colors. We'll take this top one, make this yellow. We'll take this one, give it a shade of red. Take this one, we'll make it uh, blue. I'll just give it that shade. We'll take this one and make it green. Maybe I'll go with a different shade of green. Now I'll stick with that for now. And then what we'll do is we'll take this first one and let's go to the fill tab and let's edit the gradient. We're going to give this a gradient. Each we're going to give each segment a gradient just to give it a little bit of um, just to give it a little something to pop off the page a little bit. You take that, let's give it a gradient, let's edit the gradient, let's go to the drop down, let's select the second one. If you're using Inkscape version 91, these list of gradients will be up here in your toolbar somewhere. I'm using the older version of Inkscape, so they remain down here on my screen. So we'll go to that second stop, let's bring the A column all the way up. I'm just going to give that an off shade of yellow, maybe an off shade of orange maybe. Close out of that. We can go to the... Um, the create and edit gradients tool. If you're using a laptop, this key will not be on the toolbar. There will be a little arrow down here on the bottom left. And if you click on that arrow, you'll see the gradient in the list. But if you're using a desktop like me, this key should be there. Anyway, so once we get there, we could take this, bring the darker shade towards the back of the arrow and bring the lighter shade towards the front. We can click on this one, do the same thing, give that a gradient, edit that, go to the drop down. Bring that up, make this darker, close out of that, put the darker shade towards the back of the arrow and the lighter shade towards the head of the arrow. Do the same thing over here, give that a gradient, edit that, go to the drop down, go to the second one, bring that up. And I'm actually going to give this a different shade of blue, just like that. Put the darker shade towards the back of the arrow and the lighter shade towards the front. And finally, we will do the green as well. Give that a different shade, slightly different shade. Kind of like that. And that pretty much does it for that. Now, inversely, what you could do is let's take this, let's select this whole thing. And let's right click it and go to duplicate and let's move it off to the side. We could do a monotone variation of this, which I'll explain that after I show you how it works. Let's turn this whole thing black 
and bring the opacity down in half so we end up where we were just a few minutes ago. Let's take this le top left segment and let's right click it and go to duplicate and hold control on the keyboard and press the zero key and that's going to outset it. It's going to do path outset. That's the shortcut version of that and I'm actually going to do that a few times for each one. I'm going to control zero a second time, third time and a fourth time. Let me zoom out. And then hold shift on the keyboard and click on this segment to the right of it. And go to path difference. And then I'll right click this and do the same thing. Right click, duplicate, control zero, one, two, three, four. Hold shift, click on the segment beneath it. Path difference. And do the same thing to this one. Right click, duplicate, control zero, four times. One, two, three, four. Hold shift, click on the segment next to it. Path difference. And then finally, we'll duplicate this one. Control zero, one, two, three, four. Hold shift. Click on that one on top of it and go to path difference. And that has created a monotone version of it. Kind of like that. So that pretty much does it for this tutorial. That's how you can use Inkscape to create um, an arrow pattern that moves in a circular motion. So if you have any questions, just let me know and I'll help you out. And thanks for watching.